This show, or in this segment, we are going to do question number seven, which is electrostatics. This is a topic from grade 11, but let's see what it has. So we've got two small charged spheres, which are called A and B, are placed on an insulated stand 0.2 meters apart, as shown in the diagram below. They carry charges of negative 4 times 10 to the negative 6 coulomb, which is in the correct SI unit, and positive 3 times 10 to the negative 6 coulomb, respectively. M is a point charge or a point that is a distance of 0.1 meters to the right of B. So this is our stand and these are distances. Remember, if they're going to ask you the distance between A and M, it is 0.12 plus 0.1. Just keep that in mind. Number 7.1 says we must calculate the number of excess electrons in sphere number A. Excess electrons is a part that we do in grade 10. But for 7.1, excess electrons, there is a formula for it. Always remember your formula, which will be N representing the number of electrons. Q, a capital Q, will be my charge. And then QE will be then the charge of one electron. QE is on your formula sheet. The charge of sphere A, as the question is asked, is negative 1.4 times 10 to the negative 6. Let me just double check that. It is to the negative 6. To the negative 6, the charge of one electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Remember, the charge of one electron is on your formula sheet. So it's not a number that you guys need to memorize. When you're doing electrostatics, remember to put everything in brackets. We've got negative 1.4 multiplied by 10 to the exponent negative 6. And here at the bottom, I've got negative 1.6 times 10 to the exponent negative 19. And here I get 8.75 times 10 to the, to the 12 electrons, 875 times 10 to the 12 electrons. 0.75 times 10 to the exponent 12, and always remember to indicate your SI unit. In this case, we were looking for electrons. Let's look for the next one. Number 7.2 says I must calculate the magnitude of the electrostatic. Remember, magnitude is just a fancy way in physics that we use to say size. So calculate the magnitude of the electrostatic force exerted by sphere A on sphere B. Do not confuse electrostatic force with electric field. So the electrostatic force that A inserts on B, and this, this is how we're going to answer it. So for 7.2, formula first, F is equal to K. K is a constant which you find on your periodic table. Q1, you can use QA and QB, that's also fine. Q2, all over R squared, and this is the distance between their centers. The constant for K is 9 times 10 to the exponent 9. The charge for A is 4 times 10 to the negative 6. In this equation, you don't have to include the negative. And then for B is 3 times 10 to the exponent negative 6. All over, the distance between A and B is 0 0.2, and remember it's distance squared. To make this topic or this sum much easier for yourself, I would rather put everything as it is and not do it step by step. Also remember to always put brackets around everything. So at the top I've got 9 times 10 to the exponent 9. I've got 4 times 10 to the exponent minus 6. I've got 3 times 10 to the exponent negative 6. And here at the bottom, I've got 0 0.2, and that is squared. So the electrostatic force will be 2.7. 2.7. The SI unit we use for force is a capital N. Remember, a small n is chemistry, and that means moles. So let's look at number 7.3. We must describe the term electric field. When you are describing or giving a definition, it must remain the same. So this is how we're going to do it. It is a region. 
a region of space in which an electric charge experiences a force. So it is a region of space in which an electric charge experiences a force. Let's look at 7.4. It says we must calculate magnitude, just means size, of the electric field, the net. Remember in physics, net is the word is the same as total. So the net electric field at point number M. So this includes what A and B makes a M experience, and that is 7.4. So for 7.4, electric field, remember you must also always choose direction, I'm going to take to the right as a positive. So I'm going to say E net to represent that I'm talking about the net of EA plus EB. You could have done it separately and then added it. I'm just going to do it in one straight shot. For A, remember it is K. It is the charge on A and R squared plus the K, which is a constant, Q of B over the distance of B to M. M K is a constant found on your periodic table or on your formula sheet rather, which is 9 times 10 to the 9. The charge of A is 4 times 10 to the negative 6. The distance between A and M, remember, I must add the 2, which will 0 0.3, and that is squared. Let's do this one plus. I'm going to do for B now. K is a constant found on your formula sheet, which is also 9 times 10 to the exponent 9. The charge on sphere number B is 3 times 10 to the negative 6. The distance between B and M is 0 0.1, and that is distance squared. Again, I'm going to put everything in my calculator so that I can get the same, the, the correct answer, but I'm going to do it bit by bit. So I'm going to start with this half. Remember to always put brackets around everything. That is 9 times 10 to the exponent 9, and 4 times 10 to the exponent negative 6. And here at the bottom, I've got 0 0.3, and that is squared. So I get 400,000 for this section. I get 400,000 for this section. Now remember, I had you taken left to the right as a positive, so this means A, that will then be a negative. I'm going to add. I'm going to do exactly the same for this half. 9 times 10 to the exponent 9, 3 times 10 to the exponent negative 6, and here at the bottom I've got 0 0.1, and that is squared. I've got 2, two and 700,000. So 2, 7, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Now I'm just going to work with those two, and let's see what we get. I'm going to put it exactly as in my calculator. Remember, I choke to the right as a positive, so then A will be a negative. So that's negative 400,000, 1, 2, 3. And I must add 2, 7, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. And therefore, I get another very big number, 2,300,000. So I'm going to say 2, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that is then my net electric field. Let's look for numbers. Let's look at what is number 7.5. So we have a continuous question here. Yeah? So it continues to say charged spheres of A and D are now, and another charged sphere, which is D, are now arranged along a rectangular system of axes as shown in the diagram below. So before they were in a linear motion, in a straight line, and now I can see that they're forming some form of an L. A and B and D is now placed there at the top. Now it continues to say the net, so the total, electrostatic force experienced by A, which is over here, will be 7.69 newtons in the direction as shown in the diagram above. 
Number 7.5 says, is the charged sphere of D positive or negative? Will D then be positive or negative? That means that D will actually be a positive. So 7.5, it means D will be a positive. Let's look at number 7.6. 7.6 says we must calculate the magnitude of charge in D. So the charge of A and B is known, but the charge of D is unknown. So that is what we need to calculate. We are given the net electric field, electrostatic force experienced by A. So that is where we need to start. So for 7.6, I'm going to use theorem of Pythagoras. So the force exerted by R squared is equal to the force of AB squared plus the force exerted by AD squared. I'm told that the total force experienced by A will then be 7,69 squared. The force exerted by AB is what we calculated in the previous question, in question 7.2, and then we got 2.7 squared. If your answer was wrong in 7.2, use it here you will then get marks for continuous assessment. But I do not know the value of D, so that's what I need to find out, of AD squared. I'm going to make AD the subject of the formula. So I'm going to take the 2.7 on the other side, 7.69 squared. If a number jumps the equation sign, it turns to a negative. That will be 2.7 squared. And that will give me FAD squared. I'm going to work this out. I'm just going to change this one. On this side, mathematically, we are allowed to. So I'm going to work with these two, close brackets, 7.69 squared, and I need to subtract 2.7, close bracket, squared. So I get that number. So the number I got was 51,8461, but I need to find it, the force of AD alone, not just the squared, so I need to put both sides and the square root to get rid of the exponent. The square root and the exponent will cancel, leaving me with the force of AD. So in my calculator, I'm gonna do exactly the same as I wrote down here. Under my square root, I'm gonna put 51,8461. And therefore I get 7.2, always to two decimal places. I'm gonna get 7.2, and the SI unit for force is the Newton, but I'm not done. I'm gonna continue here. Now that I've found the force of A and D, I can then find the force of A alone. If I have F, it's equal to K, the charge of A, and the charge of D over the distance between the centers squared. The force between the two I just calculated, which is 7.2 Newtons. K is a constant that you find on your formula sheet, which is nine times 10 to the exponent nine. The charge of A was given to us in the diagram, which is four times 10 to the negative six. But the charge on D is unknown, so I'm gonna leave this as Q, and the distance between the two of them is 0 0.15, and that is then squared. So this is just mathematics. I'm going to work so that I have my Q2 as the, form, as the main thing in the formula. So that I just put everything in one equation just once. I've got a fraction, whole number, I'm going to put this over 1, I'm going to cross multiply. So all of this multiplied by 1 remains the same. So it's 9 times 10 to the exponent 9, and 4 times 10 to the negative 6. Still I've got Q2 on this side, 7.2 multiplied by the denominator of this side will give me 7.2 multiplied by the distance between the centers squared. I'm looking for Q2 by itself. I'm going to divide both sides with what's bothering the Q2, which is 9 times 10 to the 9, and 4 times 10 to the negative 6. What you do on the one side, you have to do on the other side. Times 10, 9. 4 times 10 to the negative 6. Voila. Now you can see this and this will all cancel, leaving me with Q2. Now, the why I like doing it like this is because if you're going to do it bit by bit, you're constantly going to round off your answer. But if you put everything in the calculator all at once, it makes it much more easier. So I'm going to put everything as it is on the, on the, form on the sheet here. 
I've got 7.2, open bracket, I've got 0 0.15, close bracket, and that is squared. And at the bottom, I've got 9 times 10 to the exponent 9, which is my constant for k. I've got 4 times 10 to the exponent of negative 6. Close that one there. Equal to, and I get a very long number, 0, comma, and then 45. So I'm going to write it exactly as it is. So that's 0, comma, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and that is 45. And I'm going to move my comma. Remember now, in grade 9, we were told, taught about rounding off. So I'm just going to move my comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then my comma is going to be there. This means I'm going to have 4, comma, 5 times 10. How many times did I move my comma? Negative 6. And the SI unit for charge is then a capital C. Remember, a small c means concentration. And this is all the questions that we have today for the topic of electrostatics. Remember, electrostatics is a topic that comes from grade 11. So if you have forgotten some of the clits and jitters, take your grade 11 book and then recap on that.